Oleg Deripaska transformed Rosell into the world's top aluminium company before the global crisis near decapitated his empire. Now Eurozone debts are mounting and America and China aren't delivering. Oleg Vladimirovich, will there be a second wave of this crisis? Not really. I do believe that we will have a, maybe a prolonged soft period of soft demand. And it's based on uh, fears among invest investors you know, over European uh, misinterpretation um, of what's going on in China. Uh, it's not clear for uh, many what would be outcome in U.S. battle for um, on present election, and this is uncertainties which uh, prevent investor. To, you know, to build uh, some something in the long term, and based on short term, of course, everything you know looks you know not very positive, and that's why what we've seen in you know, a recent even we have, we've seen quite a long rally, you know, on a few markets. You know, I think demand stays soft. You say there's misrepresentation of what's going on in China. What do you mean? We have a growing, well-growing economy, which. Uh, demonstrated unbelievable uh, growth rate for the last 30 years. And of course now they in the face of transition, not just political transition, which uh, affect efficiency of uh, state institutions, but also in transition in terms of how they manage their state-owned enterprise, what's the relation with the region, what's the core industry, how to implement energy efficiency plan, how to implement environmental problem. And of course this transition, you know, slow, you know, the the speed of the you know of the changes and I think you know but no one should read it as a something like decline or China you know, lost its efficiency no it just transition to be you know to be more healthy and more efficient do you think China is misrepresented by the Western media sometimes? yes exactly you know we have a lot of analysts who never been in China who just read data and and try to build analogy on uh, you know, based, I don't know, you know, they understand what's going on in the U.S. or in Europe. And you really need to be in, you really need to work on this market. You really need to cooperate, you know, almost on a daily basis, you know, with the people. No one wants to, to see, you know, what's behind, you know, any action. And uh, I think it's done a lot of bad things, you know, in, in the past. No one's seen, you know, how China, you know, you know, you know, made its way. And also it's maybe, you know, wrong you know, now because it's made great, uh, how to say, uh, wrong signal, you know, for investors. How must the EU reform to survive? It's very political, what's ambition, what's the social policy. The only way is they need to revise, um, you know, in the monetary policy in terms of how heavy should be Europe, because Europe are too heavy. It completely out of real balance of trade, to real, you know, um, you know, competitiveness you know, of European uh, operation and uh, low euro. I already said it. You know, you know, on, on a level even to parity to dollar. I think it's um, it's great opportunity to seek true solution for the crisis because at the moment, in you know, a heavy currency, it will not give them opportunity to grow. You say the euro too heavy. Euro way too heavy. In what ways is the EU uncompetitive? Look, for example, in um, uh, in construction, in uh, housing market, you know, demand, you know, almost at the level of zero. Why? Because it's too high cost. If you, you know, would try you know, to measure, you know, you know, compare with a different region, and uh, you know, demand for European product export opportunity, especially for the South economy, cost of doing business for the South economy. With a heavy euro, you know, they, they got this tremendous benefit, you know, to have this, you know, huge, you know, platform, European Monetary Union. But at the same time, they got, you know, huge problem with the, you know, highly raised cost, salaries, all this stuff. And Politically, they couldn't find a way because you know you need to cut wages, you know, put pressure, you know, on you know on on, on the budget, you know, spending. You know, there is no one who would withhold this. You know, politician will, will <laughs> they don't want to make economy more efficient. Politician, we know, you know, from the business side, they want to make their terms longer. <laughs>
and this is a let's say um, bargain solution make euro float and reach a level which will show that they become you know, more competitive sorry is the euro not a free floating currency it's a free floating but it's a wrong you know, ECB policy what, 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 what ECB policy is wrong? You know, because you know they tight you know, supply. You no, know, they just you know done recently you know some steps you know, and and of course you know this you know, it's creating the wrong signal you know for the, for the currency market. Should weak euro members like Greece be cut off from the euro? No why? Because they are bringing the rest of Europe down. How? Because they are making German borrowing costs other borrowing costs more expensive. Yeah, but they're making German markets you know, more wider. <laughs> Will the euro survive as a single currency? No doubt. The fall of Lehman in 2008 sparked a global slump. Do you see a second Lehman forming in troubled states like Spain? No, there is no scale like this. You know, it's just impossible. There may be institutions which will demand you know, some restructuring. But I, I can't say. I think the world is more just you know, towards you know, this problem and uh, I mean not globally but based on every country and every you know, experience of every country in this issue and uh, I can't see any financial you know, crisis you know, which would be triggered you know, by collapse of any institutions. What about America's 15 trillion dollar debt? Is that a problem? 16. No. Why? Why it should be? Don't forget that con you know, U.S. economy will be much more healthier. It's not about you know, you know, let's say, today or this year battle, but but the the revolution, what they done with the shell gas, and let's hope with the shell oil, you know, will you know, will create new you know, opportunity for. It's already created you know, new opportunity for U.S. Do you see opportunities, business opportunities in America? And which are they? Yes, you, know, you, you have in the cheapest, you know, in the oil, in the cheapest gas and uh, you know, energy in the tariffs, cheapest for in terms of industrial application. You have well trained in you know, the labor, you know, you have very, very, very developed logistic, you know, good support in R and D. I think in the U.S. very attractive for investment. You talk of diversifying Russia's economy to the Asia Pacific. Is Russia destined to be China's resource supplier, or is there a greater role? Without Russia, there is no solution for sustainable growth in Asia, not just in China, in Asia. And it's not just resources, where we will be way more competitive than Australia, Africa, or Middle East. There is no doubt. It's not about uh, an opportunity for production of semi-product or manufacturing in the you know, using these resources. We also would be way more competitive. You know, in the long term, I would say in medium term, you know, than anyone who would like to supply to the Asia. But you have to understand that Russian ease is uh, most important for agriculture solution and for water solution. That's why the you know, role of Russia, you know, it's not just energy, you know, but also you know, you know, how to make life easier for, for Asian countries with overpopulation, with uh, you know, demographic boom, you know, with the growth. You know. and, and I think Russia doing you know, proper steps you know, towards. We shouldn't use our resources you know, you know, at next second. You know. But we can use our resources to help Asia to grow and attract investment you know, which will diversify our economy you know, in general terms. Do you mean Russia can feed Asia and provide it with drinking water? Everything. Drinking water, agriculture product, processed food. What's needed to make Russia more competitive globally? Infrastructure, tax regime. We believe that would be proper adjustment in monetary policy by Russian you know, Central Bank. We need to have more financial institutions on the eastern part of Russia. And of course, you know, we need to open. The Russian economy opened already. We're part of double tier, but we open in terms of we need to welcome more investors. Let's talk currencies, the yuan and ruble. How will they develop as Russia's economy turns east? I think there would be an uh, opportunity for Russian companies to you know, tap debt markets you know, in yuan. Because the yuan and ruble are increasingly used in global trade. How does that affect your business and how do you feel about that generally, the decline of the dollar? There is no chance for decline of the dollar. Let's not dream. 
but it, you know, it improves the cost you know, in terms of transaction structure. And um, for example, we have um, some of our brand register on, on Shanghai. Shanghai traded in Ramambi, and of course, it's uh, you know easy for us, you know, without conversion, you know, just do you know our trade. You know, we not just export to China, we also import a lot of components from China. Russell Chief Executive Oleg Deripaska, thank you for speaking to our team.